All right, bang, we're on. Megan Knight, how you doing? Yeah, good, eh? Doing pretty good. Where are you coming from? Where are you? Um, I'm actually overseas at the moment. So I'm um, in a place called Azerbaijan in a, in a bar, in Baku, which is a pretty big city here. So uh, coming from a different spot. Baku? Where's Baku? Yeah, uh, it's um, next to Russia and Iran and oh, some um, pretty big countries. So we're uh, based out of Dubai and then um, just getting different little parts of Europe. So it's uh, it's been an experience. Wow. When did you move to <laughs> Dubai? Uh, so about a year ago. Yeah, my partner got some work uh, in Dubai and um, yeah, I followed him and uh, here we are a year later and um, yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. So I miss Australia a little bit, but yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a pretty cool adventure. I've heard it's a great place to visit. What's it like to live there? Yeah, it's definitely, um, I it kind of um, exceeded all expectation really besides the beach if there was a beach it'd be pretty uh, unreal but you know the culture is um <clears throat> pretty different and um the food's a little bit different um and i don't know i think just moving away from like you know like that real big safety net is um is pretty exhilarating as well yeah yeah you you've had an interesting life i was just doing some research on it seems like you've lived three or four lives already for a young person <laughs> It's, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's crazy. I think, too, it's like you see, you, you see all these uh, kids, you know, you see people kind of giving their summaries of the year and like, oh, I had a, had, you know, 2022 was the worst year of my life. I had a rough year. I had <laughs> this and this and this. I'm like, oh, shit, you, you haven't had to deal with anything. What are you talking about? Yeah. Like, you slapped you in the face yet. I know. And I think, you know, I mean, for me, I just look at life. Uh, pretty positively now and and some people find that really hard because um you know they've got small things going on in their life but yeah I've, I've been dealt some pretty um some pretty uh crazy crazy cards um and i've yeah i've lived a big life and uh, i haven't even hit 40 yet so it's um mm. hopefully it's gonna get better <laughs> well <laughs> it hasn't been all bad i mean you're a double olympian <laughs> commonwealth champion i mean you've had some you've had some really high highs but then you've had low lows too so you've had it seems like you've lived on these extremes uh, throughout your career. And and for those that don't know the two ends of the spectrum, I mean, I just talked about the Olympic side and the success on the in the pool, but like you had some tragedy in your life as well, right? Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, you know, with the high highs also comes some very pretty, pretty bad lows. And um, I think, you know, growing up, I, I love swimming and I uh, lost my dad early, like so lost my dad um, when I was about three years old. So mm. for me growing up, I probably didn't know anything different, but um, you know, he was a, went to the 72 Olympic games and Olympic swimmer went to Commonwealth games. So obviously I kind of, you know, followed in his footsteps a little bit, um, mm. became, you know, all right at swimming, I guess, and just followed my dream from there. And um, yeah, a few obstacles on the way. Uh, my brother passed away um, when I was at the Rome world championships in 2009. So. Um, from there, it was pretty hard to come back to swimming um, and then did my stuff in between, you know, went to a couple Olympics and some Worlds and some Commonwealth Games. And then I think, you know, I think honestly, the hardest part was um, retirement. I think knowing when to call it quits and then, you know, that big scary step of being a normal human again and, and what is normal and what's expected and, um, you know, trying to yeah, piece that little three, four years together is, um, I found it extremely hard. Yeah. You know, a lot of swimmers have difficulty um, leaving the sport because it's been their identity. Um, you've obviously had extreme success with swimming and, and been extremely dedicated to it for many years. But then you've had, uh, you know, these life experiences where you've lost your father, you've lost your brother, and both of them in, in car accidents from what I read. And uh, so pretty tragic. So, uh, you know, how, how have you been able to kind of um, put all this in perspective in terms of, uh, you know, the, the stuff that you've had to face personally and then the successes that you've had in your in your swimming career, you know? Yeah, I think um, I think I didn't didn't really get an option, to be honest. I didn't uh, I didn't ask for it. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, you, you, you go through it and you think, why, you know, why me and why does it happen? Um, and I've asked myself that many questions, but you get to a point and you got to, you know, for me, it was about being positive and stop beating yourself up about something that I had no control over. You know, I had no, absolutely no control over. And, um, and it sounds, 
you know, that sounds pretty hard, but um, for me, that was the only only way to move forward. Um, for me, it was remembering, you know, my, remembering my dad, remembering my brother and celebrating them. Um, they had a pretty, pretty mad life. And, and I think for me to turn kind of that into a little bit of um, motivation to, to celebrate them and not be, you know, always kind of reminded of, of the, the bad things that happened to you. For me, it was about, I wanted to let, you know, a little bit of my swimming do the talking and, you know, inspire people that, um, you know, everything, everyone's got something going on in their life. Absolutely. No one's perfect. I don't believe in perfection. So everything's, you know, someone's got, you know, lots of stuff going on. And that's what I kind of, you know, base my um, kind of life values on as being positive and um, being kind. Um, and I was just lucky that uh, Michael Ball, my coach, was absolutely amazing. And yeah. he helped me through, you know, probably the toughest periods of my life. And I'm still, you know, pretty stoked that we, we chat, you know, twice a week and um, we laugh at things. And he was, yeah, he was pretty much having a, having a good network around you, I think, mm. um, is is really important. Yeah, Bowley's an incredible man, cr incredible coach and mentor. He's <laughs> been at it for many years and had a lot of success with a lot of different people and, and still, still at it, you know, still one of the best. <laughs> You know, what's it like to have someone like that when you, you know, you lost your brother in 2009 when you're at the World Championships. What does someone like Bowley even say at that point in time to you? Uh, there's nothing, you know, he didn't, I've never seen Bowley without any words. You know, if you if you know him pretty well, he can talk to anyone he absolutely loves chat, having a chat. So yeah. for him to not say anything, I knew it was, it was quite serious. And at Worlds, it was the, you know, probably one of the, fittest I've ever been and um, everything was going super. We had a really good camp leading up and I was swimming fast and I was super excited about the super suits and mm. I was doing nearly PBs in training. So I was like stoked yeah. and uh, yeah, Bowley <clears throat> delivered the news and um, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm kind of look back and, and, and glad that he, you know, he was the person that broke pretty much news that was, you know, I, didn't believe it at the time. Oh, and, really? Bowley was the um, one that told you? Yeah, Bowley was the one that broke it to me. So, oh, wow. um, yeah, it was, we just sat there for a couple of hours and just, um, yeah, there was, you know, what do you say? Nothing to say. He just gave me a hug. And just, I think for Bowley, it was just being there. Um, for me, when I moved to Bowley, um, I used to train with Glenn Baker at Southport. So when I moved to Bowley, it was a bit of a different experience. Um, he kind of was, ended up being like pretty much a dad to me. Um, Bolly is probably cares for you as a human first and then a swimmer. So I really respected that. Um, and I think it brought us closer, you know, closer together. But um, if you ask him, it's probably one of the hardest things he had to deliver as well. And um, I think it bonded us, you know, the tragedy bonded us pretty special. And, um, you know, he was, he was there for me every day through the tantrums that I threw through the, you know, the good times and a gold medal at 2010 Commonwealth Games, you know, not even a year later. So he was there for the highs and uh, trust me, there was lots of lows too. Yeah, what do you what do you say to to people that are, like I, I, I did read some comments of people who said they had a tough year last year I and mean, they hope 23 is better. So like you came back the following year and you win the Commonwealth Games gold medal on your birthday, your 22nd birthday, you know, uh, what a way to celebrate, you know, and, and um, have that success. And like you said, not even a year later. So how do you go through a tragedy like that and then turn it into like this ultimate performance? Yeah, I think, um, I think the main thing for me was it was okay, as in it was okay if I wanted to give up swimming. It was okay mm. if I wanted to keep swimming. Um, right. And for me, it, it was one day at a time. Absolutely. It was, hey, let's get through one day. Let's not worry about um, two months or, or three right. months. So Bolly was Bolly was really good at being um, in the present. And I think um, and being in the present, I would I would say is, is a really good um, thing for kids if they're going or swimmers or whoever are going through a tough time. Yeah. And I think, you know, having good people around you, um, you know, surround yourself with people that you want to be like. Um, and you know, pretty much um, just be you, like try not to copy what someone else is doing and, and, mm. and see what works for you. Um, mm. I think that, yeah, pretty pieces of advice I'd like to follow and, um, and don't be scared about talking about it. You know, I held it in a lot, 
Um, and I think it, it built up and built up and built up. And the more I talked about it, the more I felt comfortable about, um, you know, tragedies do happen in life. That's, that's life. You know, no one, no one knows about what's coming tomorrow. So we're all in a pretty even playing field. So, um, yeah, life is, life is life. Yeah. Yeah. Life is life. It comes out, <laughs> comes out you whether you like it or not, you know, and <laughs> yeah. it's just it's going to happen the way it happens. And sometimes <laughs> you can't control it, but I guess, I guess there is some level of wanting to control it. So like, does your, is your mom now like overprotective of you? <laughs> no, nah, mom, my mom was, uh, I'm one of four. So I'm the youngest of four. So I kind of got dragged around to everything. Um, I got, you know, like all the hand-me-downs from everything. Um, mm. No one really, I don't think really cares about too much about the, the youngest one. They just get, <laughs> you know, pulled along. And mum um, was never really a helicopter parent or anything. She um, never pushed me to swim. And like, I remember, you know, broke the Australian and Commonwealth record in the 200 backstroke. And I rang my mum and I said, mum, I, you know, I did a pretty good time. I went this time and she's like, oh, is that good? <laughs> I'm like far out like that was I was like yeah it's pretty good to PE yes, mom she's, <laughs> yeah she's like hey that's that's pretty good so that's the you know that's kind of what my mom is like um and I think she's she's had a really really tough life but she's probably one of the you know probably strongest people I know um so I, I think I get positivity from her and um yeah she doesn't know much about swimming so I try and educate her a little bit but uh she's um just loves being in a garden and just kind of lives life for, for every day. Yeah. What are you trying to get out of your life now? You've gone through swimming, you've gone through tragedy. So it's like now, now you're at the, at this point in your life, like what are you looking for in life now? Yeah. So at the moment, um, just experiences, I think, uh, you can't beat them and it's a, it's a memory. Once you have an experience, it's a memory forever. And I think for me, um, I love, I love sport. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely love sport. And I love talking about sport. I love um, stats. I love goals. Uh, I just kind of like looking into athletes and what drives them. So at the moment I'm doing a little bit of sports commentary and I absolutely love it. Um, yeah. Motivational speaking. Um, so I did some stuff with Amazon prime last year and um, yeah, I, I think, I, I think I found something that I, I, I truly, truly really enjoy doing. I saw that. And that's kind of part of the reason why I wanted to talk to you too, is because, you know, you, you, I saw you on camera all of a sudden. I was like, wow, <laughs> really good at this. Like <laughs> it's difficult to be good on camera and I don't think people appreciate it. Uh, and yeah. you're natural at it. Yeah. I think, uh, I, I don't know. I just, I think once you, once you find something that you're really passionate about, it's, it's quite easy to talk about it. Um, you know, like you, you mm -hmm. talk about swimming and talk about athletes and, once you, you know, when you're passionate about that, it's quite easy. Um, and I think, I don't know, maybe, maybe I just found something that I, I really enjoy doing. And I'm sure there's a lot of stress on the inside rather than what it looks like on camera. But uh, yeah, it's something that I, I, I really enjoy. What did they have you doing exactly? Were you um, giving previews? Were you commentating races? Or what were you yeah, doing? so it's, yeah, I was commentating. So I started off commentating um, just age nationals, mm -hmm. which is uh, pretty hard because, you know, you're on air. I was on air maybe for six hours commentating. So wow. there's a lot of heats yeah. of age nationals. So there was actually a really good thing to kind of get thrown in the deep end um, commentating about kids you don't know. You know, I had no idea about these kids. And right. it's exciting, though, because you can see that talent coming through. Uh, and then I did opens, which is um, uh, 20, so the Olympic trials, so not last year, the year before. So I did Olympic trials, um, was sitting next to James Magnuson, James Magnuson. So that was pretty cool. Um, kind of bounced off each other and um, had some good debates. And and then we're doing, yeah, previews of, of what's coming up and then post of uh, some good swims. So, um, I mean, once if you love swimming, you love swimming. So you like to talk about it anyway. What's, so the, it was good. what's the secret to commentating a good race or being, being a good commentator during a race? Like I've tried to look at swimming and talk to people while it's going on and I'm, I'm <laughs> completely useless at it. I just like, I'm just watching it. So I'm like, oh, I'm terrible. But like, how do you commentate yeah. swimming? I think the key is um, just small, like uh, small and, and be, um, you know, kind of be, precise about what you're trying to explain right. um, and, and think about it as not 
think about it as someone who doesn't know anything about swimming um, and you're trying to explain it to them. Because if you talk too much swimming lingo, it's it's going to go out the window um, to most people because they're not going to they're not going to know what be you know back end speed or front end speed or be no. talking kind of that lingo. So I think trying to be and be yeah precise with your words about how you explain things. Um, and I think the biggest thing that I like to say is um, just get excited. Like if you see someone, you know, if you see someone on that world record line, you're going to get excited. Um, you don't want to be you know monotone just like oh yeah, yeah i think he's gonna break the world record yeah you want to be excited you want to be pumped up and yeah a little bit a little bit of tone to your voice we individualize training in the pool so why not individualize your nutrition erica biney of biney wellness building will help you and your swimmers get exactly what each athlete needs through genetic testing and personalized nutrition plans so stop guessing what you should and shouldn't be putting into your body Athletes within a few weeks have noticed they're recovering faster because they're fueling their body with what they need and staying away from what their body hates. Erica understands swimming. She gets it. She's worked with over 20 Olympians, including the fastest man in the world, Caleb Dressel. Group discounts are available, so go to Biney Wellness Building and get in touch with Erica today. That's Biney, B-E-I-N-E, wellnessbuilding.net. Is there a distance or an event that you prefer to commentate? Like, are you, are you like I'd imagine the fifty would be too short to commentate because you can't say anything. Yeah. It's just kind of like, and then the fifteen hundred is so damn long trying to fill in all that time. So, is there like yeah. an in between of perfection for you? Uh, I think two hundred. So I'm a little mm. bit biased, obviously, but uh, mm. yeah, the two hundred, two hundred is good because it's it's not the sprint and it's not a distance and it's you know race plans come into it so much and I love that. I absolutely mm. love it. I love to see courage. And I love to see people sting so bad. So mm. um, I think, yeah, 200 is probably good. 50 is a bit short. Um, most of the calling, like if you're a race caller, you're probably going to do the whole 50. 1500 is is pretty good to get athlete stories out there. I quite like looking into into um, athletes and seeing if they're studying or seeing if they've, you know, done something outside of swimming just to give the public a little bit of um, info as well. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say to you, um, what, uh, okay, I've had this debate a little bit recently. I'm just trying to throw some stuff out there and argue with people and have some fun about <laughs> something. I, I did say uh, the 50 freestyle was the toughest event on the calendar, which <laughs> I think is probably bullshit. But, um, <laughs> but I used to, I mean, it depends though. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just think it depends on what, you know, who is the person that says yes or no to that though. I, mm. I think I think you had a pretty good argument there. I, it depends if you're talking about lactate or if you're talking about, you know, speed or. Precision. I don't know. It's yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think each each race has its own elements of, um, yeah. you know, you've got to be skilled in those areas. Look, I couldn't I couldn't swim a 200 fly to save my life, and so like <laughs> for me to say that the 50 free is easier than that, or harder yeah. than that, is like a cop out. You know, so it's like. I think it's all relative for sure, but um, you know, I guess my my biggest argument was that the the fifty freestyle is is fairly hotly contested. Like everybody has a crack at the yeah. 50, right? Like everyone will do it. And then um, you know, I think the biggest myth was that everybody thought everybody thinks that it's kind of like anyone can win it. You know, it's just a yeah. fifty, so anyone can win it. And I just don't think that's correct. I think there are people that are more inclined to win it more more regularly like any other event right like you have your favorites and you have your people that are going to dominate but but the 200 back is a special kind of hurt right like it's a pain oh. that is unlike any other right <laughs> it's um it's just legs like the legs mm. just and if you're really good at underwater um mm. it it become kind of becomes a little bit um strategic like if you're really good at underwater you're working mm. you know three turns but then you've got no legs in the last 25. So do yeah. you work your strength and hit those three turns or do you hold back a little bit so you have legs? Because, you know, the last 35 metres of a 200 back is, I don't wish it on anyone. It's uh, who can hold on, you know, to technique and who wants it more and, and who hasn't kind of gone out too hard. So it's, um yeah, it's it's a different hurt. It's uh, all legs and, and a lot of heart, I think. What about you? What was your uh, ultimate race strategy for a 200 back? Turn her back. We played around a little bit, Bolly and I. Um, I didn't have enough speed, so I was uh, took me a while to get into the the um, fifty nine club. So 
eventually did at the end of my career. So I didn't have as much speed as the other girls going out. So, um, but I had a really good um, feel for the water and, and my back end speed was probably, you know, my strength. So um, not to overspin would be my first 50 building into the, you know, building into the second um, or the second hundred. So building that second 50 into that halfway mark and pretty much the back end speed is probably where I did all my work. So that, you know, hit the hundred meter mark and then work that third 50. And the last 50 is um, it's just hold on, hold on to your technique, um, hold on to that grip of the water and, and pretty much just fight, fight all the way until you touch the wall. <laughs> Are there particular words that you're saying to yourself each 50? Like if you're if you're trying to stay in control the first 50, is there a word you're saying? And then like on the third 50, when you're trying to like pick up your tempo or maintain your speed, like are there certain things that you're saying over and over in your head? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I was a big, um, you know, big kind of talker to myself. I think the first 50 was just don't spin. So if I, you know, my, my stroke rate might've been super high, but I wasn't holding any water. So mm. for me, it was don't spin, don't spin, don't spin and just relax. So you can get excited and go, oh, hell yeah, like I'm an Olympic final, like let's go for it. But for me, that was just, I would just be spinning too much. So first 50 would be don't spin. Second 50 is build that second 25 and, and hit the hundred meter turn, like the best turn you've done. And the third 50 was, um, we used to work on my core, so like core connection and rotation. Um, and last 50 was just just a battle. It was pretty much just don't don't give in. <laughs> don't yeah, think about the pain. And, and, and fatigue too, you've got to stay in your technique, like you said, right? Yeah. Like so even though it's a battle, you're you're battling to stay in your technique rather than just grabbing and slipping water, right? Yeah, and backstrokes are kind of you stroke that you can hear if people are hitting the back of their hand. So if you let your technique go, you'll hear the slap of the water. So you'll hear them hit in the back of their hand really bad. And and for me, if you could hear that slap, it was meaning I was getting lazy. I wasn't, um, you know, little pinky wasn't going in first. I wasn't getting on top of the, on top of my strokes. So for me, if you could hear that slap on the, you know, this, the last 50, I was, uh, I was hurting. I was hurting pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. What about the people around you? Were you the type of, uh, person that was aware and and kind of worked off people's strengths and weaknesses in that sense in backstroke yeah a little bit like i if i i can see you know in backstroke some people say they don't look some people i know it's it's a definite you know a definite individual preference but for me i could see um probably you know one or two lanes um can't you know if you're in lane four you can't see lane eight but are you I was just definitely your eyes to the side, or are you turning your head? What are you doing? No, I'm, I'm heads like straight still, but you out of your peripheral vision. I, I right. could see probably the person next to me, maybe the person just splashing next to them. Um, and then obviously, when you turn, if you turn sideways, you have a quick look. I always used to have a look. I didn't look underwater because I'd keep my head still, um, work the underwater, but roughly, I kind of knew um, where my opposition was um a little bit hard if they're in front of you though and you can just see they're splashing at your kick of their kick you you're kind of in trouble there but um i tried to stick to my own race plan but if there's someone next to you you can definitely see them in backstroke and you know, uh, for me I, I i work off that you know i try and beat them uh, that's that's what i want to do i want to beat anyone to the wall yeah what about this the secret to being uh, good outdoors and indoors like do you have strategies that you tried to uh, implore where you were, uh, you know, focused on a, a certain point uh, indoors and then what were you doing outdoors? Yeah, outdoors, I don't think there's a real secret to swimming straight. A couple of people, my friends, like some stuff asked me, how do you swim straight and backstroke? And I was like, there's no secret. I don't, I don't think there's a secret out, outside. Um, I think tinted goggles go a long way outside. Um, but I was indoor, I think it was just, we just a lot of practice in in the um like a competition pool so i'd get to a competition and bowl it'd be like nah we're practicing you know in the race pool just have a look you know if you're in lanes three four or five six have a look you know what's on the roof can you spot anything can you swim so it was preference for me i obviously indoor because um you don't have you know all the elements outdoor but i think just yeah picking getting comfortable with the surroundings whether it's a roof or whether it's something on the roof that you you guide yourself off outdoor is a little bit harder 
um, trying to stay in the center of the lane, obviously, because you don't want to swim further. But um, I don't think there's a real, real secret. That's just practice. I I trained outside, so I was I was super lucky. Um, yeah. I didn't find it that hard. Yeah. Well, let me change uh, topics real quick. Uh, where do you think where do you think swimming is? You know, like I I can see us. You know, like you said, you were on Amazon Prime. There, there's some things going on. Like, but you know, it's yeah. kind of always been there. I, I don't get mm -hmm. the sense that swimming has really taken that next step yet. Like, I I think we're we're still kind of stuck in this. Like, swimmers are making a little bit of money. They're getting a little bit of fame. They're you know, yeah. it's kind of like the top end still. It's it's always been the top end. You know, when I was around, you had four or five swimmers that were really the big deal, and it seems the same thing still these days. Like it doesn't seem like swimming has really kicked on to the next level of professionalism. Would you agree or what? Yeah, I definitely think um, it hasn't, you know, I mean, everyone knows swimming, you know, right, every four years or, right. or two years. So every Olympics or Commonwealth Games, especially in Australia, Commonwealth Games is nearly bigger than the Olympics. I don't know how, but right. that's, you know, that's when everyone talks about swimming. And it's so hard because it's, you know, in between is where you do lots and lots of work. And it's not like you get that, um, you know, TV or anything with like the footy players get every week. You don't get that exposure right. every single week. So you see these swimmers every four years or two years and it's, it's quite hard, you know, you, and you see them for maybe what, well, if you see them in a 53, you see them for what, 22 seconds. And you're like, okay, how am I meant to get to know this person? So, but I think, you know, the last couple of years, like with the ISL, I think that was, that was really, I think that was a big step. Um, right. I'm not too sure where it is or what happens. Um, it, and it seems it's maybe gone a little bit backwards, but right. I think that was a really big step. I don't fully um, know the details of, of the payments or anything like that, but I think it was a good, I think swimming needs a lot more exposure and a lot more racing. Um, you know, they're obviously trying to, to push um, and to get it exciting. Swimming is not like, um, you know, if you watch 1500, sometimes it can be a little bit boring. So yeah. trying to, you know, get excited and get that um, atmosphere in. I, Australia just had the jewel in the pool not too long ago. And um, I think that was pretty exciting, you know, bringing back, I think they're trying, you know, they're really trying to get that, you know, get a grasp of it and, yeah. and grab it and run with it. But you know, like you said, I think it's, I think it's stuck. It, it's quite, you know, it's stuck because, we can't really do too much in between the two and the four years because what about ultimately this? you're in, you're in commentary too. And like, sometimes I get so frustrated with swimmers that haven't really got any personality when the microphone's put in front of them. <laughs> I know it's difficult. Like they come out of a swim, but it just seems so generic yeah. and we keep saying the same things and yeah. questioning is kind of the same and the answers are the same. And, it's, it's almost like we don't have any real personalities in the sport or, or swimmers haven't figured yeah. out how to be a personality. So like, it, you know, what would be your advice if you were going to put a microphone in front of someone these days and maybe, maybe even it was yourself, like you're going to put a microphone in, you know, in, in your face yeah. 10 years ago. Like, what would you say to yourself now to say like, how would you get yourself out there? I think my, and my biggest thing at the moment is um, what I like to say is be you stop trying to be someone else or, or copy someone else. I think the best thing that I saw out of the Olympics was Kaylee McEwen, you know, yeah. after a 200, I think it was a hundred or 200 back. And she obviously swore on TV and I'm not saying swearing is the thing, but I don't know her personality just came, you know, came off onto the screen. It just jumped right. at you straight away. And I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, and I think you're right. Like a lot of, a lot of people say the same thing. Um, yeah. They all, you know, they all say, pretty much the same thing because i don't think anyone wants to stand out yeah. too much like no a little everyone's a little bit scared of um yeah. you know being a little bit different right. so my advice would be be you if you're different go for it um yeah. but try and you know have your experience don't try and do it off you know you can look up to you know kyle chalmers or C caleb dressel or katie ledecky you can look up to them for sure but yeah. you know you don't have to be the same personality as them right, right yeah yeah i agree with that too i think i think that's where swimmers really need to look at themselves and say who am i and who do i want to be and yeah. how do i represent myself and you don't have to change when the camera's on you you can still yeah be exactly yourself, you know? and um i think i think kyle chalmers does a pretty good job of that and, and he, I think he's probably 
taken some criticism for it, you know, but uh, at the end of the day, I think he's tried to stick to true to who he is. And I think that shines through. And ultimately, you know, yeah. um, people are going to appreciate you more in the long run if you're just yourself. Right. And, you know, yeah. um, so I, I agree. I think there's that. So, um, well, listen, I, uh, I, I've just got to do one thing here. Um, I appreciate this time that you've taken and um, yeah, thank you. what's the next step for you? Like where, what's coming up for you? more commentary in the future? Oh, I, I would love to. So if, uh, if anyone wants some commentary, <laughs> if you know anyone, uh, I would love, I love swimming. I love sport. Um, but yeah, I'm chasing some, any kind of commentary. Um, so that's pretty much, uh, I'm living overseas actually this year. So, um, but I'll be back and forth maybe to Australia, maybe to see if there's anything on there. Um, obviously building towards Paris 2024. So, um, yeah, that's that's the plan. And, and to make some more memories and, and to adventure and see the big wide world. Yeah, well, get yourself on the pool deck in Paris. It'd be fun, right? <laughs> yeah. oh, it'd be so fun. I think, you know, there's lots of stuff coming up in swimming, like lots of really cool talent and some pretty good uh, jewels that I want to see in Paris 2024. So oh, it's going to be, I don't know, I, just, I think I get more excited now than I did when I was swimming. Yeah. Um, because I don't, maybe because I, I know I don't have to go through too much pain. <laughs> it's a bit different. <laughs> all right, Megan. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for doing this today. Nice to catch up with you. All right. Yeah. Good to chat. Thanks so much. All right. See you later. Bye. See ya. Swim Angelfish. Swim Angelfish is an online certification program that strengthens your teaching curriculum to serve swimmers of all abilities. Swim Angelfish will prepare you and your instructors with the skills to teach swimmers with autism, physical disabilities, anxiety, sensory and motor conditions, and more. Learn to teach skills faster and with more comfort with Swim Angelfish. Apply for an only alpha pool product scholarship and receive up to 50% off your certification. Go to swimangelfish.com today to apply.